last year, around about this time, uh, some members of FEMENG decided to plant some small little facts around about the engineering buildings on campus. One of these particular facts noted that only 9% of the UK workforce in engineering were females. And I came across this again quite recently, they've still not been taken down, but I found a small piece of vandalism. And this person had written this, and I, I don't feel that it's something meaningless because it actually portrays a frustration that um, I have felt by a number of my peers in engineering because they see these facts and they understand that people are bothered, but they don't feel it themselves. They don't experience sexism in their everyday lives as engineering students. And especially the girls, they don't feel as if they're being disempowered by any sort of system or by their male student friends. Um, so this is a problem because there is obviously an issue, but people don't see it for themselves and they don't really understand why it's an issue for the world. So today, I really don't want to dismantle this particular discussion because it's quite complicated, it's quite sensitive. Um, but what I would really like to discuss is ways that we can work towards making a more diverse workforce and why I believe that's really important, especially in engineering. A lot of companies right now are working on initiatives that enable them to have more women coming into their workforces. Um, some of you may know the term positive discrimination or positive action. And in some cases, this is heralded as a great way to get women into companies. Um, but this isn't always the best way to do this. And I'll illustrate this with a little story about myself. Um, so this year, well, last year, I won my first ever trophy. And this was a really big deal. It was a big shiny trophy. Um, and I had got that because I had applied myself, I had told them about the things I had done and that I was passionate about. Um, and I felt so proud of myself when I got that award. Um, and there was a big ceremony and I remember standing up in front of all those people and they were all clapping. And then just before we left, the person who was speaking on the microphone said, as you can see, all the award winners today were women, so no one can say we're not doing our bit. And so that really changed um, the nature of what that award meant for me because it went from being something I had earned because I deserved it to being something that these, uh, this organization had decided to give me as a sort of pat on the back. There you go. Um, isn't that nice of us to give you that? Um, so this isn't a very helpful thing. I find that so upsetting. Um, so how can we look at different ways to try and address the issues that women are saying, hold them back, um, but do it in a way that's not gonna cause them to be devalued in their workplaces. So if we think about what engineers do, they're designers, they're creators, they make everything from the chair that you're sitting on, the phone that you're pretending you're not looking at, and maybe the insulin pen that you had to use at lunchtime, okay? So who does that cover? You can't limit that to one particular demographic. We have such a diverse world population. You know, it's half men, half women, 10% LGBTQ+. And why is that not represented in the people that are making all these objects that we use every day? Um, so not even just this aspect of it is important because there's statistics to back this up. There's economic data. Um, for instance, if you look through the Harvard Business Review, there's so many studies done into the effects of uh, gender and racial diversity in the workplace. And one particular study that stood out for me was from Credit Suisse, um, and they found that when they assessed um, over 2,000 companies, the ones that had one woman on the board as opposed to none and more women always had higher financial returns. They had higher net growth. And if you think about it, non-homogenous teams should be smarter. Um, and there's so much uh, interesting facts about this that I really encourage you to go and look at. And so reading them, it really did make sense for me that this is a good thing, that diversity is important. Um, so how can we apply that? What can we do to create more diverse workplaces? So I'll tell you about myself and how I got into engineering. 
So from quite a young age, I was quite interested in biology. I was like very into uh, medicine, and I thought that's the route I'm going to take. And you know, I thought I was smart enough; I could get in, no problem. But then. Uh, at age 13, I was hit with a devastating blow where I couldn't take biology for my standard grades. And the only option I could take was physics. And I was very upset about this and made a very big fuss. Um, but as you can imagine, a 13-year-old making a big fuss about having to take biology standard grade isn't going to make much of a change uh, to the school, so I ended up having to take physics. However, this turned out to be a very... Um, impactful turning point in my life because it turned out that actually I was quite good at physics and I quite liked physics. I had an extremely encouraging teacher who made sure that everyone in that class felt very valued um, and encouraged all of them, even the ones that clearly were struggling and probably wouldn't progress with it. So then I suddenly had to incorporate physics into my idea of what I was interested in. And then you come to your fifth year, which in Scotland is the most important year for getting into university. And I ended up being one of the best in the class for our maths. Um, and that really surprised me. I never thought I fit into the very, very top category of maths. Um, so then I was having a lot of turmoil because I really, really loved physics and maths suddenly. And I realized that I didn't really want to leave them behind. But how could I still pursue my interest in medicine and human biology um, with that in mind? So I um, spent a long time thinking about it, trying to talk to people. And it wasn't until one day my dad got an email from his university about this mysterious new subject called biomedical engineering. And the minute I heard it, I just thought, that's it. That's exactly what I need to do. And I didn't really know what it was, but I just knew that fit what I was interested in. And sure enough, it did. And I'm so thankful that that email came at that time and that I was forced to take that physics class. But isn't it just so sad that that's what my future was depending on? My future was depending on an awkward timetable and a difficult guidance teacher and eventually dependent on a random email in my dad's very, very full inbox. Um, so really there's an issue here because my entire life after that point would have been very, very different had those things not fallen into place. And I'm not an exception here because this is very true for so many of my friends who are girls in engineering. They came into it because either their dad was an engineer or because they stumbled upon it when they were looking for the other subject that they thought they were supposed to do. And it's not necessarily that if I had done medicine, I would never have achieved something good, but maybe it wasn't the best thing for me and I didn't know what else I could have found. Um, so this is something that is really important and we need to make sure that this isn't gonna happen to any other girls in the future or boys. So the Fairman Society was started in 2013. A bunch of naive first years all gathered together and we just thought, we want to do something girly for the girls. We'll have bake sales and, I don't know, make a calendar or something and just bring all the, all the sort of lone women in the different engineering courses together. And we thought that's what they needed. We thought that'll help them, that'll make them feel happy and we'll encourage more people to come to engineering because they see that they can still have a great social life with women in engineering. But actually, we ended up getting a bit more interest from school teachers than we did from other female students. And it turned out that the teachers also recognized that there was a gap in their education in terms of the careers guidance. They really wanted to have women in engineering coming to their school because they felt that we could offer something very valuable as being role models. So this became quite a common theme. We would go to school events, we would round up different disciplines, and we would go and demonstrate something or just talk to school children. But then as Fairmont evolved, we realized that actually it wasn't just school children that needed role models, that actually university students really wanted role models as well. And it doesn't stop the minute that you come to university. So we started holding events where we got alumni in and we would have recent graduates come and they would just talk about their experience at Glasgow Uni and then how they got into the career that they're in and maybe the issues they had along the way or the fact that they had no issues, which was very common. And that was great to hear other women say, actually, I had no problem. I 
didn't experience any discrimination, and that means that maybe for you, this won't be an issue either. And that in itself is quite empowering. Um, and then again, uh, this year we recently launched a mentoring scheme because we realized that there's such a plethora of information held in the people who are in the higher levels of these degrees. So we've linked up fourth and fifth years with first and second years and their discipline. And this is something that we've got the guys in our course to engage with as well. So it's not just women like talking to women, it's boys talking to women and all these different mixtures of um, personalities and people. But the whole point is we're saying there needs to be more um, information exchange from the upper levels at every stage of your career. So another issue that you may have heard about, about why women feel that they can't really progress in engineering industry, is because they're not given challenging enough jobs. They're not given the opportunity to really demonstrate their skills and um, show what they can do. So I thought um, a couple of years ago, how could we make a really big, high-profile project that just showed off what women in engineering could do on their own. Um, hence, FemEng in Rwanda, okay? And so basically what this was, the idea is that we were going to collaborate with the University of Rwanda, and we were going to try and help them to see where they could use some of uh, what FEMENCH has done in the University of Glasgow, and could that be helpful for them, and hopefully learn something interesting along the way as well. What this turned into was three weeks spent in the capital city of Rwanda. Um, we worked with a group of students, uh, all female students from the College of Science and Technology in the University of Rwanda, and we also worked with eight high school graduates from various high schools around Rwanda as well. And what we did was we split into groups, we made eight different workshops demonstrating engineering concepts, anything from low-cost diagnostics to water control to renewable energy. Um, and what we did was we, we then went to schools or we had schools come and visit us at the university and then we showed them what engineering really was. We would give them a small presentation and we would tell them this is aerospace engineering, and these are the subjects you need to study in order to go there, and this is the career that you could have afterwards. And that information in itself is something that they all really wanted to know. But then we also gave them the chance to experience that engineering mind for themselves. We gave them design problems. We showed them a blind person going around a supermarket trying to figure out the prices of the foods, and we asked them to design something out of cardboard and foil. And it was incredible what these outputs were. And we were all blown away by the enthusiasm and the confidence that these girls had. Um, and it was really reassuring, because we thought, maybe this is it. Maybe this is all that you need to do. All you need to do is just show them what engineering is, give them some information, and then let them get on with it. And if that's what they want to do, then they will have nothing in their path stopping them from doing it. And that was achieved. Bear in mind, we saw, only, we saw over 500 schoolgirls in those three weeks. That was with only two hours maximum with each group of skilled children and one week of preparation. And we managed to make almost all of them say afterwards that they wanted to be engineers, OK? And whether that was just to make us feel happy or not, we don't know. But the point is that that wasn't so much effort to just give them that little bit of insight into their future, and that could be life-changing for some of them. And in terms of the students who were involved in this, they gained a really valuable life experience as well, because not only are they planning a project, raising money, talking to companies, talking at the Scottish Parliament about this, but they're also getting to demonstrate that they're experts in something, that they are valued in their discipline enough that they can talk to children from another country about it and have an impact. And that's so important, especially for girls who are maybe in the earlier stages of their career, to really feel that ownership over their work and their skills. So what this leads to, I believe, is that we're just gonna eliminate that obstacle, that obstacle of women feeling like there is nothing holding um, them back just because they're women. And ultimately, I think that's the key thing we need to do. Just show them that they can do it, show them that we're doing it, show them that other people have done it. 
And I think that will really solve a lot of the issues that we have. So just thinking about what I'm saying today, first of all, in terms of your workplace, the societies you're part of, uh, your project teams at work, are there things that are potentially holding it back from being as diverse a workplace as it could be? Do you have unconscious biases that are potentially getting in the way of you having a more diverse team? And I myself have unconscious biases. I, I will maybe initially prefer to have someone on a team with me because I feel that they relate to me more, but that's not actually the key to progression, I don't believe. So maybe think about that for yourself. And in terms of your children, I know that maybe right now, the little girls in your life might all want to be princesses, okay? But that does not mean that that is it. And that does not mean that she's not capable of doing something completely at the other end of the scale in her later life. I still want to be a princess, but I'm very, very happy that I'm an engineer. So just think about changing these attitudes and giving this education in the earlier stages what this could do for the world. Thank you. <laughs>